Hello friends and enemies, welcome to or back to Happy Pronounce Me as well here with anticipated releases for the rest of the year. I tried to do quarterly. I think I did two out of four. And then I was just like, you know what? We all we all know I won't post one in October or in late September for the rest of the year. So I was like, we'll just let's lump the next chunk of months together. So I have some late August releases for you up to December, which doesn't have much. I feel like September is our last big push into releases for 2024. So listen, I've already got like two 2025 arcs, which is bonkers to me, but we're here. We're here. So let's dive right in. And as you watch this video, these are books coming out in the next two weeks of August and then on. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I found quite a few and have quite a few I'm excited for. Some of these I do have arcs for already, of course. Some I don't. Some I'll just be placing library holds as soon, as soon as I can. So first up we have August 20th, Once You're Mine. This is by Morgan Bridges. I'm really excited for this book series. This is a really fun sounding indie, former indie book that got picked up by Forever, who I do trust to do this and do this well. I'm biased. I'm friends with Dana over at Forever. <laughs> but I do trust them to pick books and not like have them changed a ton from indie spaces to be dark romances like they've done republishing of Katie Roberts O'Malley series. Like they, they do publish some darker titles. So like... I trust them on this one. Uh, if it was like some other publishers, I don't think I would have as much trust, but I'm really excited for this one. I was excited, found out about it, it got picked up, and I was like, well, we'll just wait. I'm actually maybe hopefully gonna read it for my arc vlog that you're getting next week, so fingers crossed I get there. But yeah, I'm really pumped for this. This is about a stalker and this girl who I think is connected to him in some way, like someone he's taken out. But yeah, he stalks her. And you know what? I don't know, that just sounds like a fun time right now to me. <laughs> So yeah, there's that. And then we have on August 27th, we have I'll Have What He's Having by Adid Karam. I read his YA Darius the Great is Not Okay. Loved it. Went to a little forever event at Stimulet and we talked, I talked with him. He was fantastic. And I'm really excited about this one. This is set in Kansas City. It is a men loving men romance about a, so he's mistaken by a salmonier and invited into a VIP area. And <laughs> basically is like okay what is going on and then this like i'll never see him again he inherits the family restaurant and then of course they run into each other again i think this sounds really fun i don't know if i've ever read a romance set in kansas city so that's interesting i feel like that's interesting i don't think i've read that before so i'm curious to see how this goes i'm excited to read it i think it sounds so so fun i absolutely adore the concept here i think it just i think it sounds like a fun one it's also supposed to be very spicy from a couple of the reviews i skimmed so that has me equally excited uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the YA book by him I read, so I'm hopeful this equally delivers. Then we have Marriage and Masti by Nisha Sharma. Y'all need to get this book. If you have not read the trilogy that is the Shakespearean aunties, I need you to get on it ASAP because I am obsessed with these books. They are so good. First of all, the first book has its problems. I will not deny that. Tastes Like Shakar, fantastic though. Like absolutely must read. I mean, there there is absolute filth in these books and I deeply appreciate the filth that Nisha delivers in these so so much and I am just so excited for Vera and Deepak's relationship this like accidental marriage that happens and I've seen some great little TikToks about some stuff in the book where like he just hands it they like fight over who's gonna pay because they're both super wealthy I can't wait cannot wait and then let's move right into September on September 3rd we have Phantasma oh who is this by so yeah, this is by Kaylee Smith, another forever title. I feel like I read so many for it's fine. This one sounds so interesting. It seems to be more of a gothic-y romance. So our main character here, Ophelia, enters into a mansion that is like a maze and all these things to find her sister. She enters into a bargain that maybe she shouldn't have. And it sounds like a sort of gothic romancy. And the cover is kind of giving that. I could see this with a cover with like a mansion manor situation. But yeah, I'm really curious about this one. I think this should be really fun. I love the idea of it and it definitely is adult. So unlike the ones it's kind of being compared to, which is like Carvel and Throne of the Fallen, which neither of which I've read. Um, but I think it sounds intriguing. I'm really excited to just check this out. Next we have Hot Hex Boyfriend. This is by Carly Bloom. If there's one thing I'm gonna do, it's gonna be me picking up witchy books and either loving them or being severely disappointed every fall season. This one I am intrigued by. Delia is convinced her family is are witches and that she is a witch, but obviously there's nothing there until she accidentally breaks a hex. And her hot neighbor, Max, has been like keeping an eye on the family and then is like, oh shit, I gotta come help her. So like, 
yes yes please this sounds fantastic her powers are unleashed and I'm assuming chaos abound I think this is gonna I think I'm gonna like this I think that sounds like a fun setup for me and yeah I'm like fingers crossed for another witchy book I like because y'all that list is short. <laughs> Next on September 10th we have Broken by Daylight. This is the newest Beasts of the Briar series. If you are unfamiliar with Beasts of the Briar I have I have the best fall read for you. You need to get caught up immediately like immediately because one we're four books in it is a why choose fantasy romance that delivers on the why choose on the fantasy romance on the slow burn but not too slow burn because there's definitely burn it, like there's definitely stuff in each volume but like there's slow burns to like confirmed relationships this follows a girl whose mom has been missing her whole life basically vanished not her whole life but a large portion of her life vanished into the woods into the fairy realm and her dad has been gone all the time on the hunt for her mom trying to find her again well she ends up in that world and ends up in the castle with the four princes of the seasons and it is Beauty and the Beast-esque it definitely has elements okay but it is not going to like only give Beauty and the Beast there's a lot of like fae mythology stuff in here that I really appreciate and really enjoy so yeah there's that <laughs> and it also delivers so much on world building and interesting plot and just keeping you really engaged as a reader in my opinion I'm dying for this book to come out I'm sure that Shay over at Shay Geeks Out and I will be buddy reading it probably the day it drops within within a few days we'll be reading it because I've got to get through it quickly because September is packed full of releases I want to read yeah I'm really really excited for this one next on September 17th we have Delayed Penalty by Tegan Hunter another one I will be reading quickly as I get it in my Kindle. This is the third Seattle Serpents book. This is a single dad nanny setup and I'm really excited for it. I don't love single dad nanny but I do kind of like it for sports books for some reason. It works for me in that way because like I enjoyed Canadian Boyfriend and I, I just think for a sports book nanny works better for me because like it makes sense that you would need a nanny and like of course there's tension because like they're in peak fitness uh, but I am excited because it is Hayes for this one. So we met him before so I'm very excited obviously to see his story. Next we have Fear the Flames. This is by Olivia Rose Darling. This is a former indie book that got picked up. I found out about it too late. I this is a hesitant anticipation okay because I am not sure. Heather over here book is claiming some people are upset at some changes that were made. I don't like that. I don't like that. We'll see how that plays out. But I'm still curious because it is kind of one of my favorite things which is like an exiled princess teaming up with someone she never thought she'd team up with. Her enemy basically. And Heather loved it so I'm just like fingers crossed is good because y'all I'm not joking when I tell you this fall I really want to read a ton of a romance to see. Then on the 24th of September we have Pucking Sweet by Emily Rath. So this is book three in the Jacksonville Rays. This is MMF. Anyways this follows Poppy St. James and two players on the team. We have seen little sprinkles of this through the last two books and I need to know. I want that interwoven bit so badly and I'm supposed to be getting an arc of this in like the next little bit. Like when you see this I might have an arc in my hand within like a week and I don't even know what to do. I, I don't need I'm gonna be like staring at that arc like I want to read you right now but should I read you right now? I don't. I do not know y'all. Tell me what I should do. Do I like hold off till closer to to read the arc so I don't finish it too soon or do I just like devour it? I don't I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. So yeah you need to let me know. I'm very excited though. I've been dying for this book literally. Then we have A Fire in the Sky by Sophie Jordan. This is another dragon romance see. I'm not joking. I'm gonna read a ton of them this fall. Uh, I really love Sophie Jordan's historicals. They're really fun and campy and I'm hoping she brings that to her romance see. There's an energy in her books that I really tend to enjoy. This does have an arranged marriage with secrets and the guy after the arranged marriage finds out one of the secrets and she they decide to stay arranged, stay married, stay arranged, married, stay married. Uh, but there's more secrets and things to be revealed. So I'm just really curious. Dragons like used to fill the sky there. Magic used to be a thing. It's maybe not a thing anymore, but maybe secretly is a thing still. We'll see how this plays out. Next we have Coffin Kisses by Maeve Black. There is no cover for this. This is an MMF as well. And I love, we've said it once, we'll say it again. I love a throuple. I love a wide shoes. I love multiples. <laughs> Too much work in real life. Fun to read. But yeah this just sounds really fun. It sounds like a great Halloween themed read. It said there was like graveyards in the description and lots of kink and like ASL and I was like cool I'm in. So it'll be my first made black but I feel like it might be a good one for me. And then at the end of September I can't find the exact date. I signed up for arcs of this too. The next book in an EP Bali's series Her Vicious Beasts will have her psycho beasts 
and she finally gets with the great white shark in this one. And if you haven't read this series and you like a bonkers why choose, if you tend to align with me on books a lot and tend to enjoy these like not this is not porn with porn no plot. This is like <laughs> This, these books to me feel like reading fic in the biggest complimentary way ever. This is not derogatory. I like fic. I like that kind of writing. These read like fic to me. I just eat them up and they are so fun. And I do think they have like a substantial plot to them in a way that works really, really well. So I'm very, very, very hopeful I get an arc. Uh, I would get it in the middle of September, I think she said when I filled out the form. So fingers crossed that thing pops up in my inbox because let me tell you, I cannot wait. But this is like end of September. It's supposed to come out. I cannot wait. But yeah, this is going to be the third installment in the series slash fourth if you count the novella. Listen, I devoured the first two in this series. Well, three, technically a novella and two full lengths in the matter of days. That doesn't happen often. And when it does, you know, it's that kind of popcorn read book in the best of ways. Okay, let's go into October. These months get shorter, I promise. <laughs> on releases. First up on October 1st we have Deja Brew, the newest in the Witchful Thinking series. I love this series. It's so cute. It's by Celestine Martin. These are all about like a small town with three cousins who are all witches and they make this wish in the first book slash do this th spell and they all face repercussions from it. Book one is a merman, book two is a fae guy and I don't know who book three what he is but I do know that she basically li relives the same month over and over uh, and is a former celebrity chef and he happens to be a former reality tv show star so I just think that sounds like a fun combo it feels like a little less like a normie and a famous person to me and I, I like that idea a lot I'm very excited for this high on my like temp drop pick this book up list <laughs> Next, we have Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. I talked about this in my romantic TBR. The traditional release is happening September 8th, and I'm excited to see how this is. I do have it already. I will be reading it, but if you're looking for it at Barnes & Noble and bookstores, it'll be available then. don't know a ton about this besides the fact that, like, she's going off to help save the world, I'm sure, but I, I don't remember what I said in the romantic TBR, and I'm not gonna rehash it, so here we go. Next, we have Double Apex on the same day. This is by Josie Juniper. And I already loved Cross the Line this year, so I've got to read this one because I'm hoping it's just that I think it will be just as good. I love this cover also. I think it's really great. This follows a math statistician type person that's on the F1 team because making F1 cars requires a ton of math. Gross. And so she's the math person and he is the driver. And of course it has like the forbidden element because they shouldn't date because they work for the, since they work for the same company. So yeah, I'm just really excited to read this one. Next we have Bitter End by Alexa Dunn. I really like Alexa Dunn's YA thrillers. I think they're very fun. I think they always just kind of have a punch to them, a very readability to them. I do need to read Pretty Girl, like the last one that came out, but I will be reading this one very soon because I think it has the most interesting premise. Basically, eight teens are trapped in a remote cabin on a ski trip and somebody dies. So yes, please. Also, the idea of being trapped in a cabin like during a snowstorm thing like that, terrifying. Not my jam. Then we have Bull Moon Rising by Ruby Dixon. This is about a female main character who can't train for the Artifacts Guild unless she can convince someone to let her be their apprentice because women are allowed to train. So she convinces this guy who's a minotaur to train her, but he needs her to marry him. On board, on board. It's Ruby. I, I trust her, inherently trust Ruby Dixon, I guess, to write this. And I just think it's gonna be really fun. It sounds like a nice mix. Then on October 22nd, then we have The Striker by Anna Wong. This is about Asher Donovan, a football star, as in like American football and Scarlett, his rival sister and a former ballerina. She wants to cross train with him after an injury and they can do that but there will be no falling in love so we all know where this is going on to november where we only have two releases this is what i'm telling you like it's getting shorter first on the fifth we have under the oak tree which i'm actually currently reading hopefully we'll be done with the before the vlog video goes up with my arcs but i'm enjoying this this is a web novel <laughs> turned manhwa published in the states it's gonna have a really pretty first edition i will tell you all that so you might want to put it on your radar for that alone if you like a pretty book but I'm really excited. This is a fantasy romance that is definitely a slow burn-ish. I don't, I don't know if I call it slow burn. It's like, it's different. This is very different than anything you're going to read that was published like in the States, but I'm really enjoying it. I really like the setup here. This follows Maximilian, who is married off to this knight who has defeated the dragon and is like revered. Basically, they get married. He vanishes to go do this battle for her dad. Comes back to get her is pissed 
that she never went to his castle. He was like, what, why didn't you go there? And she's like very nervous. She has a stutter, very sweet. Um, and he just wants to make her happy. And it's so adorable how much he just wants to make her happy. And it's all I need in life. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's definitely very like historical romance-y fantasy, like that kind of blend. And I'm enjoying it a lot. Then on the 12th, we have Puck and Prejudice. If you haven't heard, I do have an arc of this on my Kindle already. I need y'all to know that. This is by Leah Riley. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love that this is being traditionally published. First of all, I just need to say that. I love, I'm obsessed with the fact that this is a traditionally published book. This feels like something I would find on KU and I'm hopeful. Anyways, our hero is a hockey player in current day and ends up back in the Regency era um, with someone who is similar to Jane Austen. Her name is Liddy Woodash. Yeah, so they decide to get married to help save her from like her woes. And I'm just really curious how this is gonna work. Also, this, I'm sorry, this cover, this cover is banana pants to me. Also, apparently, which is not wrong, his pads are completely wrong for the position he plays. I do believe he's a goalie. Those are not goalie pads. Yeah, literally he falls into an icy pond and it thrusts him back into 1812. But yeah, Lizzie just wants to be a widow. So they get married so that he can vanish, I guess. Yeah, he's a goalie. So those are not goalie pads. Anyways, I'm excited. I will be reading this before it comes out and reporting back to y'all on it. I promise. I will put it in the weekly vlog title so you can see me talk about it. Next for December, three titles. That's it. Uh, we have Keep Me by Sarah Kate. I'm actually really intrigued by this one. I never finished the Salacious Players Club, but I will probably pick this one up. This has a broody Scottish hero, which I love. And then it, this is, has a heroine, Sylvie, who sneaks into his manor to see an heirloom and gets caught by him. And then like a week later, he shows up and is like, hey, I need her to marry me. And if it lasts for whatever amount of time, I'll give her $10 million. Where's that offer in my life? Grumps will be fine. We can get divorced and remarried for that. Uh, next, we have Unhappy New Year's by Maeve Black. This is a sapphic romance. Um, I don't know anything about it, but I'm intrigued because it's sapphic. And I'm really intrigued by Maeve Black's books and I haven't read any yet. So I'm just kind of like over here kind of hopeful this works for me really well. And then last but not least is Snowstorm by E.M. Lindsay on December 16th. I got sent this by Robin over at Paperbacks and Planners. This is a M.M. small town romance. A guy, he has to go off to the small town to like get out of the spotlight. And him and the massage therapist ended up in a torrid affair. And I think it just sounds really cute, really fun. I love to snowed in, like trapped in the snow together situation. I don't want to be there, but I want to read it. So there's that. But those are everything I'm looking forward to in the last half of the year here. I know we're a little over halfway, but we're going to call it that. Let me know what you're excited for in the comments so I can add more things to my TBR as always. And if you don't want to do any of that, <laughs> you can leave me a big book stack emoji because I don't think I'm making it unscathed out of the rest of 2024 with minimal book purchases. It's fine. It'll be fine. Anyways, I'll have links for the, all of this for you down below. Links to my friend anywhere on the internet and I will be back in just a few days with my next video. Bye y'all. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be. Life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we wait.